Cari amici di GuffoTube, bentornati sul nostro canale. Oggi ho una grandissima sorpresa, un grandissimo onore perché ho passato qualche giorno con una delle più grandi scrittrici eh, del mondo de che si occupano in particolare di uccelli, si chiama Jennifer Ackerman. Fra poco ve la presento e ha deciso di concederci un'intervista, quindi sono felicissimo. Se qualcuno di voi non la conosce, giusto per darvi qualche informazione, lei è l'autrice di questi due libri che mi ha portato direttamente dagli Stati Uniti e sono dei Genius of Birds, quindi il genio degli uccelli tradotto in Italia dalla nave di Teseo, quindi se non l'avete ancora comprato compratelo e poi anche questo bellissimo La vita segreta degli uccelli che è un libro dedicato a, appunto ai segreti etologici di questi animali che noi amiamo tantissimo. Ma dovete seguire tutto il video perché alla fine di questo video scoprirete qualcosa perché voi a chiamate i gufi sarà sicuramente qualcosa di molto coinvolgente. Prima però voglio darvi qualche piccola informazione. Per darvi un'idea, questi libri sono stati tradotti in qualcosa come 25 lingue diverse. Cioè, è conosciuta a Jennifer Ackerman in tutto il mondo. Wall Street Journal ha dedicato a lei delle recensioni. New York Times eh, definisce i suoi libri dei veri e propri bestseller. Quindi, se ancora non l'avete ancora scoperta dal punto di vista letterario, cosa aspettate? Andate a comprare i suoi libri. Ma nel frattempo vi invito a seguire questa intervista perché Jennifer, che è stata qua con noi abbiamo condiviso persino l'uscita notturna eh, osservando e vedendo gli allocchi The Town Owl eh, sarà un'occasione un meravigliosa per conoscere questa grandissima scrittrice è una persona veramente squisita ora lascio la parola a lei qualche domanda e qualche risposta da parte sua mi raccomando seguite e iscrivetevi al canale Uh, it's such a delight to be here with Marco, um, and I will say that um, our missions are very similar. Marco is very interested in bringing um, information about owls to the public, and my work is very similar. I think it's very important for the public to understand the importance of birds, to fall in love with them, really, so that they care about their conservation. And that is the, the goal in my writing, is to um, introduce people to the wonders of the bird world, to um, the incredible adaptations of birds, their beauty, their intelligence, and so that people will um, come to appreciate them more and then want, very much want to conserve them. Well, I've loved birds since I was a child and went bird watching with my father um, when I was about seven or eight years old. And so I've loved birds pretty much all my life. Um, but as a science writer, I got interested in what makes birds tick, what makes them, um, how do they communicate? How do, how, uh, how do they think? What's going on in their minds? And I read a lot of scientific journals, and I began to notice that there were very interesting reports about the intelligence of birds, about how they can make and use their own tools, how they can communicate in sophisticated ways, um, how they raise their, their young in very intelligent ways. And I thought, well, wow, it would be a wonderful idea to write a book about bird intelligence, what we know about it, what we're just discovering, and that was really how the genius of birds was born. One of the great joys of uh, researching this book has been working with ornithologists in the field. It's my favorite part of writing a book is going out with an ornithologist and learning about that bird that that person is so passionate about. They've dedicated their lives to it. This is very true of Marco and his work uh, with owls. Uh, it's, um, it's really a remarkable thing to be out in the field with someone who knows so much about um, a particular species of birds or a family of birds. And in my experience, ornithologists have been remarkably generous with their time and expertise. They really want to get information out to the public about their work in the field. And um, so I feel very lucky to be able to, to follow along and, and learn from them.
When I was writing The Birdway, one of the really astonishing things that I learned was about how birds communicate in very sophisticated and surprising ways. And one of the birds that I uh, explored was a bird in Australia called the New Holland Honey Eater. And this bird has really toppled our old ideas about how much information a bird can convey in its calls and songs. So this little bird has an alarm call that tells surrounding birds very specific things. It tells birds, other birds, where a predator is coming up from, what kind of predator it is, how fast it's flying, and when to dive for cover, and even when it's safe to come out of hiding again. So it's this incredible amount of information packed into its an alarm call. And you know, we used to think that a bird's alarm call said one thing, you know, danger. But it turns out that there's all this very specific information in a bird's call, and it makes you wonder what we're missing in the calls of other birds, doesn't it? I love to write um, first thing in the morning. I'm, I'm a, what we call in the United States a lark versus an owl. I'm a morning person like a lark is. And um, so I'm freshest in the morning. And I, so I wake up at 5 a.m. very early, have a cup of coffee and start my writing. And it's that time of day, I think, that when, when my words really flow. And so I write from about five until nine or 10, and then I take a break. But um, I, I like quiet. I listen to the bird songs. That's a time of day, especially in the spring when we have the dawn chorus. And so I'm inspired by, by all the bird song that I hear. Otherwise, I like to write in quiet. So apart from birds and riding, uh, one of my favorite things is hiking and running. I love to be out in the natural world on trails, um, going through forests, and that's really what where the, these forests are my happy place. Uh, I love to be with trees, and uh, so anything that will take me into the natural world, um, I, I just love that. So for my next book, I'm writing about owls. And the reason for this is that I've only encountered owls a few times in my life before I started researching this new book. And every encounter with an owl was just astonishing to me. And I remembered it in so much detail. Um, I had an Eastern screech owl up here in my backyard once, never forgot it. and. Um, I once saw a spotted owl in um, the southwest of the United States, and it just left such an impression on me. And I think the reason is that they're very, very mysterious animals. How do, how do birds navigate in the night? Um, how does an owl, how is an owl so beautifully adapted to its night world? It's really a world that we don't experience as humans very much. and. That these owls are so expert at what they do, at their hunting, at their um, their vocalizing, their communicating. So this book is going to explore um, a range of information about owls, and including their um, their the way that they breed and raise their young, the way that they vocalize, and this beautiful suite of adaptations they have. Uh, silent flight and extraordinary hearing. So I'm very excited about this book and I've had the wonderful experience um, here in Italy of um, seeing the tawny owl with Marco, which was again, one of those just miraculous moments for me. My favorite owl? That is a very hard question for me. Um, I, I do love them all in different ways, but I um, fell in love with the long-eared owl 
when I was in Montana um, this summer. And I think I love the way that they um, almost disappear into the trees where they live. Um, their camouflage is so beautiful. And I actually got to hold um, a long-eared owl with a researcher working there, uh, Denver Holt. And I think it was just the experience of being so close to this magnificent creature that made me fall in love with it. Ciao, Gufotuba. Is that enough? <laughs>